Hey, it's Bruce Naylor, and it's time to answer some of your questions you've left for me in the comments of my YouTube videos. And I always enjoy trying to get those answered for you. Anyhow, let's get started this week. The first question comes from Mabaric, who writes, Hi, Bruce. Can you talk about working at home versus leaving home to work with your laptop? Benefits and cons regarding productivity and mental health, maybe. Thank you, Eric. Hey, well, thanks for your question. And to answer that the best I can, first off, please understand I have worked out of my home since 2006. For 10 years, I've been working out of a home office. And I got to tell you, all in all, I couldn't be any happier or more productive. However, there was a time in my career where I did have a laptop and I did travel around to different offices. I was in sales. And so... The big difference there was not so much the applications, but the lack of screen real estate would sometimes drive me bonkers as I try to do presentations uh, on them or hook them up to different types of, uh, you know, projectors and that kind of thing. It always kind of got weird sometimes. Things didn't always work out. But other than that, uh, as you know, today's uh, laptops are extremely powerful and very capable workhorses. But nonetheless, when we get back to productivity, what I feel is the biggest benefit for working out of a home office is the lack of distractions. I can sit down and work and not worry about, you know, attending all these unnecessary meetings or getting, you know, kind of pigeoned into one of these or pigeonholed into one of these impromptu social activities, which do nothing but contribute to sucking up your time. So with that being said, it's also important to remember when you're working out of your home that you can lose track of how long you've been working. It's very easy to get up in the morning, come in and start to work, go in after dinner and sit down and what you thought would be a two minute job turns into, you know, it's 11 o'clock midnight before you walk back out of your office. So you have to be very, very careful about your time and try to keep professional hours. Working out of your home is not for somebody that's not motivated or self-motivated or self-starter, if you will, to get things done. Uh, if you tend to be, you know, needing direction and kind of lackadaisical, then it's probably not for you. But for most part, it works out just great for me. Productivity is king, but it's also important to remember that you've got a family and you've got, uh, and you need to get out and socialize and network professionally and personally to keep those friendships going and to keep those business relationships going. You can't just hole up in your office and never, never leave. Some people have a tendency to become a hermit. I'm not one of those people, but hey, hopefully that answers your question. Okay, the next question comes from Veritas Seclorum, who writes, Hello, Bruce. I really appreciate the video. He's referring to my uh, uh, video we did on CRM, and he says, Do you recommend or know of any free CRM that does not have scary terms of service. I would simply like to explore CRM software and become more familiar before a purchase. Well, I can tell you one of my personal favorites is a uh, is called Zoho CRM. There is an absolutely free version of it out there for you. And if you decide to grow, uh, then you can take out a subscription to it. But it's absolutely free. There's no uh, red tape in trying to cancel you know, your subscription is free for as long as you want to use it and if you want to pay for it. And I, and I find Zoho a good compromise uh, as far as ease of use functionality than the much more expensive packages out there. I like to think of Zoho as Salesforce Lite. It's got a lot of the same functionality at a fraction of the cost. And that's why I use Zoho. So hopefully that answers your question. Okay, the next question comes from the Electronic Geek. Electronic Geek writes, Bruce Taylor, I was wondering, do you think this is crooked? Now he's referring to the introduction of the MacBook Pro 2016, you know, with Touch Bar. And he wants to know if it's crooked for Apple because if someone wanted to buy a the newest high-end or a new highest-end 15-inch 2015 MacBook Pro, now they can't. This will force them to buy the new 15-inch 2016 MacBook Pro with the dedicated GPU. This is an issue no one has seemed to talk about. What is your take on this? Well, it is, in a way, you're correct. Uh, if you want to order a brand new MacBook Pro, the 2015 or 2016 model, 
then right they've taken off the the prior generation out there however it is still available refurbished now typically what happens when apple comes out with a new version of their laptops a lot of people will jump in uh, to the refurbished part and get the prior generation at a nice discount so the availability of inventory of the older macbook pros is going to vary quite significantly depending on demand as i understand at the time of this recording the new 26 or 16 macbook pros are selling very very well so you just have to go to the refurb section and check it out hopefully that answers your question okay this question comes from Sharak sharma Sharak writes can you suggest me a macbook pro 2016 alternative uh, so what Shrock is asking, uh, there, there's, you know, the 13-inch MacBook Pros and the 15-inch. And so let's talk about the 15-inch MacBook Pro. If I was looking for a Windows alternative day, I would look no further than the brand new 14-inch Razor Blade QHD for $22.99. So this laptop uh, features an all-aluminum body, number one, unibody construction. So it's going to be built very, very well. Razer has an excellent reputation. And I think also what's important is that you get better specs with this Razer Core that, or with this Razer Blade than you would with the 2016 MacBook Pro. For example, you get the, of course, the i7-6700HQ uh, CPU with this machine. The QHD is, I should have wrote this down, it's like 30, I'm going to get somewhere around like 3120 by 1800 uh, pixels on this machine. So it's going to be very high, very razor sharp, if you will, display. It also ships with the NVIDIA GTX 1060M GPU with 6 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. And compare this to the uh, MacBook Pro, and I think that's the... Uh, what is that? That's the R460. Uh, uh, is It's just night and day as far as I'm concerned. You're getting a much more powerful GPU on this. Uh, the 1060M is way more powerful than a GTX 980M that was just recently out there in the marketplace. So you're getting an extremely powerful GPU. It also ships with uh, Thunderbolt 3. On there so you could actually hook this up to a razor core and even get something even more powerful if you wish as far as the gpu 16 gigabytes of ddr4 ram and a 512 gigabyte uh, pci uh, ssd available i think in uh, a uh, 256 gigabyte 512 and i believe there's a one terabyte model out there as well again thunderbolt 3 it's also got USB 3 ports on it and HDMI 2.0. So this is a killer 14-inch laptop, all aluminum, unibody construction, great specifications, and it clocks in at a lower price than the 15-inch MacBook Pro. What you don't get, of course, is this touch bar, and you also don't get the Mac OS 10, or what is it called, Mac OS now, as part of the package. Apple is a combination of hardware and software to make a Mac. That's what makes a Mac a Mac. Now, if I was looking at an alternative to the 13-inch MacBook Pro, I would be looking at the Dell XPS 13 or perhaps a Surface Book, the Microsoft Surface Book. Yeah, there's more options, I think, begins to open up in that 13-inch category. But for the money on the 15-inch side, definitely the Razor, or the, uh, razor Blade and that's also available in a full HD model, which is significantly less. It's like nineteen or two thousand dollars versus twenty three hundred with the QHD display. So you save, you know, three hundred bucks, something like that, on that laptop. So that would be my recommendations to look at, or at least begin looking at another model. I will just throw it out there. Um, I'm sure it's going to be being updated very, very soon, and that would be the uh, uh, ASUS uh, UX five hundred one. Uh, that laptop, I've always been a big, big fan of. It offers a lot of value for the money, but it does have an outdated GPU. So look for that to be refreshed in the very near future. I'm sure they're going to somehow figure out how to put a GTX 1060 in that machine. So there you go. So hopefully that answers everybody's questions. I look forward to your comments down below. Bruce Naylor, until the next time, take care.